We have seen within the last five to ten years that renewable energy technologies as wind power and, and photovoltaics have developed incredibly fast. So uh, if we look at wind power, it's probably the source, the renewable source that is closest to be viable. And actually you can find uh, areas around on land and so on where we see that wind power is actually the cheapest way of producing power. Uh, if you go offshore, abroad, uh, offshore, then it will actually be a little more expensive. But again, these uh, technologies, they are on the way down in terms of costs. If we look at uh, solar uh, photovoltaics, then we have seen a tremendous development. So, uh, so just for a few years, a few years ago, we, we actually saw that solar was quite expensive. But within the last uh, five, six years, we have seen a very fast sliding down the cost curve. And actually, recently I've estimated um, how fast it actually goes for solar to slide down the curve. And we've reached a percentage of 22. That is 22%, and it means that for each time the global installed capacity of solar is doubled, then the cost will decline by 22%. And, and what we've seen until now is that typically the installed capacity doubles each second or third year. So it means that each second or third year, then the cost will decline by 22%. And, and this is certainly a very, very fast reduction. Solar power is two or three times as expensive as we see the price at the marketplace today. So, so it's, it's still quite costly, but as mentioned, they're going down very, very fast. If we look at PVs, uh, they don't produce power all the time. That's, that's quite for certain. And, and of course, there are specific challenges when we are that far north as we are in Denmark. But nevertheless, I believe we have a utilization time, full load hour of a PV for approximately 1,000 hours a year. So, uh, so it means that they can produce, if we convert the total production to full load, then they will be equivalent to approximately 1,000 hours. So, and, and it has to com be compared with, for instance, a full load hour for a, a small decentralized power plant of four to 5,000. And, uh, and if you compare to wind, it will typically be approximately 2.5 thousand to 3 thousand full load hours a year. So of course we need more installed capacity of solar than we do of the other technologies. And of course it means that they are only producing in the daytime, not in the nighttime. So we will need some kind of a storage facility or it might be that we can have other technologies jumping in when the sun is not shining. So, but, but they have an advantage as well, because solar is actually producing in what we call the peak hours. In the morning time, starting from 8 to 9 in the morning, then we really need to have, we have a peak in the demand for power. And that's actually where solar starts really uh, producing power. And then it continues all over the day, and again we have a peak at the end of the day again, so solar does actually produce at those times where we have the peak in demand. And, and not only we, it's at those point of time we need the power most, but it's all, also at those point of time where it has the highest price. Of course, the high demand and the high price, they normally go together. So in that respect, solar is actually quite a good technology. But of course, when we then go to the night time, we have a lower uh, amount of power needed in, in the system. And of course, we will get nothing from, from solar. So they cannot deliver uh, for us in the evening when we need uh, light and so on. But uh, at, the, at the rest of the day, solar is actually quite a, a good technology. Storage facilities for power are still quite expensive. And, and of course, you know that. Otherwise, we would have plenty of electric cars running around, and, and we don't have that. So uh, these are still quite expensive. And probably we won't see them, mm, not in the power system anyhow, not as a large-scale storage facility within the next 10, 20 years. So it will take quite a long time because, be, before we have, uh, anyhow, central storage facilities at a large scale. But we might see small storage facilities in the private houses. Uh, 
And, and uh, again, if you have put your, your PVs on the rooftop, then it would be worthwhile for you to actually store part of it in your own house. Because then you could utilize it in the evening time or when, of course, the sun is not shining, where at some point in time where you otherwise would have to get uh, power from, from the total, from the overall grid. And, and that would certainly be an advantage for, for the consumer to do that. Uh, but at the same time, we actually have a system problem because normally we have to pay tax on, on the power we, we use as a, as a normal consumer. But what we do not pay tax of the part that we actually are producing ourselves with our rooftop mounted uh, solar PVs uh, because they are not registered in the same way. So, so that's certainly, again, some kind of an indirect support to the consumer that they do not need to pay tax. And then if we can have part of it also um, supplied by, uh, by, by storage facilities, then of course this share would be much, much larger. So in principle, you can say that actually consumer can, can, can produce all his power to himself when he has the possibility of storing part of it. So there's no doubt that the, these storage facilities for private housing, uh, they would certainly enter into the system much before we see the central facilities because they will be much more worth for the consumer. So, so, so in, in that respect, they will probably be the first form of storage facility for power that we'll see in the system.